Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. I thought I'd talk about the uh, origins of modern folders. And uh, I'm telling you straight up right now, this is pure conjecture on my part. I think it's based on some sound reasoning. However, um, that's about all I have is my thoughts in my head and I could be totally off uh, but I really do think that uh, just about every modern folder you run into these days is uh, based on uh, two things first the uh, public law 85-623 which was the federal switchblade act and then one specific knife that came out in 1964 I think most people know what this is. It's a switchblade. And Public Law 85623, the Federal Switchblade Act, uh, which was passed on August 12th, 1958, essentially made it um, virtually impossible for knife makers to sell these things because uh, uh, they were no longer allowed to transport them across state lines for the purpose of selling them. Uh, and also uh, knife dealers and stuff could not transport them across state lines to sell them. It was illegal to do that. It, when you combine that with other uh, local laws that were already in place, it basically became virtually impossible to own a switchblade. And the switchblades were basically um, very specifically designed and, and spelled out in law about that and it basically is a push button knife or an automatic knife where the blade is spring loaded so that when you push a button the blade displays and that's really all it came down to they basically made it impossible to sell a knife that was one hand opening because of uh, the spring action on the blade so virtually on August 12, 1958, one hand opening push button knives became illegal to uh, sell. Not necessarily to own, but to sell. But that virtually destroyed the switchblade market. And since then, knife makers have been finding ways to skirt around the uh, the switchblade act basically making knives that it's possible to open one-handed without a spring-loaded blade or a push button that would open the blade uh, for instance on any kind of a, of a flipper knife that has the, the the automatic on it the the flip flipper portion back here is actually attached to the blade and you're actually having to touch the blade in order to open the knife and that's really what happens with it is you know you have the little flipper down here which is attached to the blade it's not a separate button or anything so you can open the blade that way or you have the uh, spider co hole which basically is once again you're opening the blade by turning it and then you have other things such as an axis lock where by pulling down on the lock you're releasing the blade but still the blade is not uh, being held under tension by the uh, by the spring it is not flipping open because of the lock being released the lock actually holds the blade in place the blade is actually moving by itself the same with when it's dropping as such as the lock is not really working the blade so you don't have that button lock and so the various locks that you find and the various springs that you find on uh, modern folders are all ingenious ways that uh, knife makers came up with in order to get around the fact that they could no longer use the push button that you find on a switchblade. Uh, and so basically since 1958, um, knife makers have not necessarily been looking for ways to make a better switchblade. They have been looking at ways to make a new switchblade um, 
that would be legal to own, legal to uh, sell across state lines, so on and so forth. And they've pretty much successfully done that. Now, part two, what knife are all of these knives based on? Well, it's not a switchblade. I contend that this knife right here, the Buck 110, which came out in 1964, is basically the grandfather of all modern folders. Um, and essentially, what Buck was looking for in 1964 was a uh, single-bladed knife that had a strong lock that would not fail. And they came up with the uh, lock back here on the Buck 110. And this knife basically saved Buck and has uh, been their best seller ever since. And um, really what it comes down to is they were looking for a strong lock that would not fail um, on a folding knife. Um, and this is what they came up with. And it was quickly copied by just about every other knife company in America. Everyone was coming up with ways to uh, copy the, uh, the lockback on the Buck 110. And so you quickly saw Schrade come out with the LB7. And uh, Camillus came out with their 5-inch lockback. And several other companies came out with 5-inch lockbacks. And you saw everyone copying this uh, and really this started it all and because really what happened after that was people started looking at this and saying how can we make it lighter well what can we do with the handle and everything else but essentially that's where it all started and then you can see when you start looking at older modern folders the strong family resemblance to it. Uh, this is a Gerber Easy Out. The only difference is now you've got a little finger hole here so you can open the blade up but you can see the and you have a mid lock instead of a, a back lock. Um, another one the Gerber Gator. I mean you've got a plastic handle going on with it um, but Otherwise, you can see definitely a family resemblance to it. Even in, um, you know, um, the Spyderco, uh, this is a dragonfly, obviously much smaller, but it's 25 years ago, and uh, Spyderco comes out with their spidey hole, so now you can open this kind of knife one-handed with the finger hole going up here, but still you've got the strong lock back on the back. And when you start looking at larger spider codes, uh, the resemblance to a Buck 110 is even stronger. Um, and then you, we've already talked about flippers and everything like that. But then still, you see here, even with uh, this Ganzo here, you can see the family resemblance to a Buck 110. Um, it really just comes down to, you know, Yes, you will see different types of blades in there and everything else, but essentially all your modern folders are a folding hunter with different style blades and everything else. But really it comes down to, you can trace the roots back to this knife right here, a Buck 110, a strong locking knife. Um, and any other, now you're also seeing modern folders that are actually just slip joints um, like uh, I don't have one but I think the uh, actually I do have one it's this little guy here the uh, Spyderco clippy tool um, which is really just a slip joint there's no locking mechanism for the blade at all so the blade is held in place by the tension of the back spring like uh, just about every traditional pattern knife out there which are called slip joints so you got a pair of scissors on here and your spider code little blade there. So obviously a modern design, but it's really not much different than, uh, I mean, in action and everything, than this case Peanut, which also has a clip blade and a pair of scissors. So um, yes, they look different, but they work the same way. 
and I contend that you can say the same thing with uh, this Spyderco and this Buck 110. They definitely look different, and they're made with different materials, newer materials and stuff, but the action is pretty much the same, except the, uh, the Spyderco has a thumb hole so you can open it one-handed, whereas like the Gerber Gator, which is closer to uh, a Buck 110, but also considered a modern style knife, um, is very much much closer to what a buck 110 is and um remember now the buck 110 came out in um 1964 so about 45 46 years ago this knife came out and it was not like a lot of other traditional knives but most people will consider this a traditional pattern knife um but could it also be the first of the modern folders and all of these are basically nothing more than a folding hunter i'll leave that up to you to decide that's my uh, opinion on uh, the history of uh, modern folders and where you can look back to for its origins the switchblade and the buck 110. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.